All right, I am back and hopefully we are the right way this time. Thank you for joining me live again. Sorry for the hiccup and hopefully I can edit this post live session for those who are playing it back, but we're going to start from the beginning. I'm Shana Searcy. Welcome to this live session and hopefully I'll be seeing a few more folks joining me. Um, I'll wait just a minute or two for those folks who we had to abandon. Thank you. It looks good. Excellent. So in our last session, I was a little sideways. Hopefully I have rectified that um, at this point. Thank you, Rhonda. Much better. Welcome. Okay. So to start from the beginning again for those, because this will be the live session I save for people to watch back later, but we are going to be making a collection today. So our collection, um, is going to, and when you want to make a holiday card collection, all you have to do is select a simple color palette as well as simple shapes and then put, some, put them together in different compositions as well as designs. So we are gonna be talking about how to create a very simple color palette with simple shapes and then arranging them and even you know using some and not others in different ones to create different looks and feels, but they all thematically go together. All of these cards feel like they work together even though they have different compositions. Um, we are going to be working on this one here. So we're going to kind of recreate this one, but you can see here that we have sentiments that are on the bottom, sentiments that are on the top, some that go right down the middle. These are all the same, the merry and bright that I've stamped on here with uh, watercolor, I'm sorry, waterproof archival ink. Um, and then uh, have arranged them in different ways. So you can choose different sentiments. I will put all of the links to these things, to these materials in the description of this once the live has finished. Uh, so if you are looking to get some stamping supplies or materials, you can do that as well. But I've already pre-stamped these. It's great when you can pre-stamp if they are archival and waterproof ink. Uh, makes life a lot easier. Okay. And then I'm also just gonna get my chat back up here just so I can see y'all in the chat as well. But thanks for rejoining me, everybody. All right, so let's talk first about um, selecting your shapes and your color palette, and then we'll talk about composition. So let's bring this guy back in here. So this looks like a very dark color palette compared to kind of what ends up on here. But I'll just go over the colors. This is Sap Green, Phthalo Blue, Cadmium Red, and this is um, Van Dyke Brown, okay? And then I've added Alizarin Crimson down here. You could swap out Alizarin Crimson. Hi, Sonia, hi, hi, how are you? Hi Rhonda, um, you could swap out cadmium red for alizarin crimson or use them in combination with each other, but you could get away with just one or the other, right? I've done most of my berries in cadmium red, um, but I do sometimes like to pick up a little alizarin crimson and drop that in there as well, just to give it a different tone. Okay, so you can see here, the phthalo blue, I don't actually use it in the piece by itself, but I use phthalo blue in combination with my sap green to create this much darker, richer um, pine color blue and also to gray out or make my sap green a little cooler. It's not as warm and it kind of gives it this um, beautiful kind of gray uh, tone to it, a grayish green, which I just love. I'm sure you could get this out of a tube, a particular color somewhere for sure, but these are the colors I have in my palette and I know I can make this color with them. So I just use what I have. And then our cadmium red we'll be using for our berries as I go along. And then the Van Dyke brown I'll be using for uh, twigs and joining pieces, as well as this little kind of cotton ball um, puff that I like to use in as a filler that is very soft and delicate and it's a very neutral color that really brings some kind of elegance to some of these pieces. So those are the only shapes that I'm using in addition to, which I didn't put on here just because I couldn't fit, I'll be using a holly shape leaf in some of them, not in all of them. In the one we're doing, I will be using the holly shaped leaf, but in others, you can see I've chosen to leave it out and I just do regular broad shape leaves, some pine and berries. 
So, and then, then in this one, I just do pine and berries. So it's just using different combinations um, to keep them all in the same family, but to get them to look a little different. All right, so I'm squeezing this live session in between World Cup games. I don't know if anybody out there watching this is a soccer fan, uh, but we are um, huge soccer fans in this house. Football, soccer, um, it's an international, major international tournament, and we are having a blast watching soccer, football, all day long. Um, and I know I get some traffic from some of the different countries that see these videos as I see them. And uh, I, Belgium is coming up later today. I get a lot of uh, audience traffic from Belgium. So hello, Belgium. Good luck later today uh, against Canada, my neighbor. Um, and we just watched Japan and Germany. Ah, And of course, USA. Go USA. Um, so let's get back to the painting piece of this. Um, we are going to start with... Um, now that we've gone over palette, we're gonna start with kind of placement. So I've placed my sentiment down towards the bottom and I'm going to be doing kind of this cascading um, foliage structure kind of coming down from the top, okay? So I've put my sentiment here. I've drawn in just a few of the shapes. So the ones that I struggle with to just paint cold, um, would be the holly leaves. So I put in a few of the holly leaves just drawn very lightly so I can just get right to painting and don't have to worry about the shape too much. And then I just put in a few twigs of where I want some of my leaves to be. Um, it's not all of them, but I just wanna make sure I'm covering the space. So feel free to sketch in for yourself some placeholders just so you um, kind of have a feel of where you're going or where you're heading. All right. Oh, I'm just changing the live session here again because I'm on an old one and I want to see the latest and greatest one just in case you guys are all chatting in there. And I can follow along. If I've missed any comments thus far, I'm so sorry. Oh, hi. Okay, excellent. Hi, Sonia. If you're still here, you're new, and I know Rhonda's joined me before, and Chuck Didi. I don't know if that is how you say your actual name, but you've joined me before too. Thank you for coming. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I do, even though I have some things drawn on here, is I start with my lightest but biggest. And this is a little different, but I'm going to start with these really light poof balls, okay, in the background. And I make these just using... And let's show you here my palette. It's I already have some of it here. You can see it's super watered down. It's a really light color, but I'm gonna pick up some of my Van Dyke Brown, which is a reddish kind of neutral. It's a really nice brown. And I'm just gonna water it way, way down. And then what I do is I, every so often, I'll just add a tiny bit of either alizarin crimson or cadmium red to it, just to warm it up even a little bit more. All right, so now I have this super light color, okay? Like super, super light. And I am gonna start by just placing probably at least three of them. I'm not gonna worry about my pencil lines. And I'm gonna put some of that color down. What brand of watercolors do I use? Um, these are Core, this particular palette that I have here. Q-O-R by Golden. And, um, but I use all different kinds. I use Windsor and Newton a lot. Um, when I teach the Cotman line, uh, and I love Daniel Smith, especially if you're trying to use granulation. What kind of um, paints do you all have out there? What do you guys use? Tell me in the comments. Um, anybody recommend I try anything on my holiday list, my Christmas list this year? Of course, I always love to try new things. So these puff balls, they look, they look a little funny right now, but I promise they will fill out this piece nicely, but they're not overwhelming. They're very light and airy. And basically you can see I'm, I'm just doing rough kind of circular shaped puffy cloud things. I'm leaving some white spots and then I'm going to pick up some of this Van Dyke Brown and I'm going to just drop it right in the base of some of these. and give them a stem. 
or like a, a branch, if you will, attaching them. And you can turn your card around to paint it if it's easier for you to paint this way. I know I was keeping it upright because of the, the sentiment there. All right, so I'm just lightly dropping some of this in and I'm letting it kind of bleed in and I'm even giving these, you know, I'll give one or two of them. You don't have to go crazy. Holbein, oh, I hear Holbein and Cenelier, Cenelier uh, recommended a lot. Does anybody have Cenelier out there? But Holbein is another great, um, very popular color or very popular brand. Sorry, my brain breaks a little bit when I'm painting, especially live. All right, so we've given them a little shape and form by dropping in a little bit of color at the bottom. We do have to let these dry, so we're gonna try to work around them. Um, just so I don't have to pause or turn the dryer on. So. We're gonna to try to work around these as we add in some of our other elements and we will be painting over top of them. I just gotta let them dry a little bit. They will dry pretty quickly. All right, so let's move on to another element. So I did our little puff balls here. I'm going to start to add in some leaves, um, some long stemmed leaves. But again, two of them are gonna go right over here. I drew them in as like placeholders. I wanna make sure I fill in, but maybe I'll work over on the side here first. So again, I'm gonna take some of my brown. It doesn't have to be really dark. It can still be pretty light, but I'm just gonna give myself a working stem. Boop, 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 boop. And then kind of some placeholders. And you don't have to do this step first. You can do your leaves first. Maybe I'll do that on the next one. So those are the placeholders for where my leaves are gonna go. Now let's get into our greens. So this little well here, I, I mix it back and forth with the different greens. I go super sap green and then I'll add more phthalo blue and then I'll mix it back the other way. I rarely ever clean it out, but I am just gonna kind of move this down. All right, I'm gonna add some sap green. I'm gonna warm up this color at the top. Let me just clean out this brown so I have some more space to work so you can see what I'm doing. Got another vote for Windsor and Newton. I, I like Windsor and Newton. The only thing I don't like about Windsor and Newton is their sap green and I use so much sap green that we have to we have a little feud going on me and Windsor and Newton about their sap green. All right, so sap green, you can see really warm green, really cool green, okay? And then I'm gonna water this down quite a bit to make a really light. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of this blue. This is not rocket science. I like to paint in every shade kind of between these two colors. I don't do a mathematical formula. Um, this looks good to me now for this one. On the next one, it might be slightly different color. But using the, the phthalo blue and sap green and kind of finding my way between those two colors, I just love kind of the, all the looks and feels I can get out of it from really cool dark greens to very light and airy grayish greens to really warm, beautiful, rich sap greens. Just using those two colors. So I'm just gonna start adding leaves. This one's a little darker than I wanted, but that's okay. I'm using a size four brush and I'm actually using one of my student brushes right now. This is a Princeton Select brush. These are really inexpensive, um, but really great brushes, especially for a beginner. I'm gonna turn this guy around, pick up a little more paint. And then being on the edge, you can go right up to the edge or even go off the edge, depending on what look and feel you're doing. If you want a taped edge, cause you want a clean like hard border on the side, you can always tape them as well but I'm going to put this on a card on top of a a bordered card later on so I'm going to go right to the edge oh we have some mission gold folks and Daniel Smith 
Mission gold, I guess, is good if you live in a humid state, Rhonda says, or a humid location because of the honey. It's made, the, one of the binders is honey and they're very pigmented, which I love super pigmented uh, paints. Core are very pigmented, high pigmentation. They can get really bright if you like to paint in reds and like really bright reds. I just did a cardinal painting and people were like, how is that so red? Well, it's this paint right here. Um, Okay, so let's add in another set of leaves. These are pretty dry now, so I think we're dry enough. I can paint over this. So you're gonna see I have these twigs here already outlined for myself. I'm gonna paint right over this. Y'all, my silver black velvet brush is still missing. And I'm pretty sure I lost it. If you've been following the drama, I thought my son borrowed it, but he did not. Uh, but the last time I saw it was when we painted together. I don't know where it went. It's gotta be here somewhere. But if you saw the state of my studio, you would understand why it's missing. <laughs> Cause the studio is crazy, crazy messy. All right, so I'm gonna put a, that there and then I'm going to Oh no, what size? What size brush did I lose? My size eight, silver black velvet. It's my favorite brush. And I don't know how I'm surviving without it, but I am. It's somewhere. I just got to take the time to really clean my studio and look for it. But we kept bouncing between like my kitchen and my studio to paint because we were painting together. So I feel like it got lost in transit somewhere maybe. I don't know. All right, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. There we go. All right, so we have uh, two kind of leaf shapes. We're a little unbalanced on this side. I'm gonna add, but we still have a lot to add. I'm gonna add, actually, I'm not gonna add anything right now. I'm gonna add um, my holly leaves. I'm gonna leave these here, and then I think I'm gonna put a little bit of a small one here, but I'm gonna do the holly leaves first. All right, so I'm gonna do my holly leaves, which that I do in a very dark, highly concentrated, so lots of paint, blue and green, kind of mixed together in equal concentration. You can see here, it's a really dark color. And I'm gonna start on one side, just following my traced outline here, putting in a lot of paint. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush off and I'm gonna come in with some water and just blend it out, just so I get some variation in the shape and it's not just like a hard blocky shape in here. It's got some highlight and some shadow. But I always find this a very awkward shape to paint, like my brain doesn't wanna paint it, so I do outline them. And even now I'm like, this doesn't look right. But then I go back and I look at a holly leaf and yes, that's what a holly leaf looks like. I do want them a little pointier, a little more jagged on the end, but you know what? You can only save it so far, but we're going to be putting in more stuff. Okay. So I have another one right here, right next to it. I'll make sure to get the pointier ends on this one. And somehow I've managed to screw this one up, even though I drew it out. My lines were too light. That's okay. I'm going to keep going. All right. So again, putting in some really rich color in one section, rinse my brush off. How many of y'all out there make a mistake? We all make mistakes when we're painting, every single one of us, even the super, super professionals, I swear, I promise. Um, but how many of you make a mistake and you just stop? Don't do that, keep going, keep going. Even if you think it's not savable, just, just keep swimming. 99% of the time, I promise you, I've made so many mistakes and 99% of the time they're savable or not even noticeable once you've 
finished it. All right. One more of these. I don't want too many of these. I'm going to pay attention to this one because they are the darkest colors. So they draw the eye. Generally, the eye gets drawn to the darkest, brightest colors. So you don't want to like overwhelm your piece with them, but, and you also want to make sure they're a little balanced. There we go. So for those of you just joining, thank you for joining me for this live session. If you're watching back later on, um, if you've just joined, we're working on creating holiday collection, card collections using simple shapes and a simple color palette. So we're only using really four colors because the either of these reds can be used. So four colors and a couple of different shapes in different combinations to create all different kinds of compositions and shapes, but they all kind of look and feel like they go together. So making a collection. All right, so we have three of our kind of four main shapes. Um, next would be to add in um, berries or pine. I'm going to add in my berries first, which I normally save them to last, but I'm gonna fill in some big spaces. So again, this is kind of, to turn this right the right way up, this is kind of coming down this way. I'm gonna add some more of these leaves on this side in a few minutes, but I kind of wanna add in my berries. I'm gonna put a big cluster of them kind of right in the middle here, and I'm gonna start like right here. And I'm just using my cadmium red watered down. Oh, there's my puppy protecting the house. I'm sure someone's like walking by or delivering mail. She's the biggest, dopiest, fluffiest dog. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, you will definitely see her at different times in my story because she is my gal pal. Oh, thank you, Rhonda. Rhonda says she's been enjoying these card tutorials. That is my greatest gift is if you all are enjoying them or finding them useful. All right, so now I'm gonna take some, I've put these down, I've put in a pretty light color of cadmium red, almost pinkish, and I'm gonna take some straight cadmium red while they're still a little wet, just a little on my brush and start to drop some of that in. Sorry, here you go, you can see taking some really opaque. The thing with the cadmium colors, especially in core, but in even other brands, they are probably the most opaque colors in um, in the line, the cadmium color, in watercolor. Like they have um, an opaqueness to them. They're still transparent, especially if you water them down, but in their full concentration, they're pretty opaque and they can cover and keep their vibrance really nicely. All right, so I've put in a cluster of berries here. And now the one of the parts I love for this is when I pick up my brown to add a twig, I'm gonna let it run into the berries. I'm gonna be careful so it's not like getting overwhelming. I'm gonna put these little notches. Can you guys see that? It's probably like super tiny, but put these little notches in the tops and I want them to bleed a little bit into the berries. And then also creating my connector stems. Wow, these berries dried really fast. And then at the end of the day, I want my cluster of berries to have different value. So I want some pinker ones. I want some redder ones. I want, um, you know, a variety of different values and colors, or it looks like different colors, even though it was all made with the same color paint. You're not a fan of gnomes. That's okay. That's okay. The gnomes are super popular um, with a lot of folks, but then some people are creeped out by gnomes as well. So 
I do have a couple of gnome tutorials up there and people really, really seem to love them. All right, I'm gonna add in one more cluster or probably two more clusters of berries. I'm gonna do a small one over here in the bottom corner. Boom, boom, boom. Get those in there and then I'm gonna do another here and watch I'm just gonna overlap right over top of my leaves I'm not gonna worry about it you can definitely see the leaves through them it's fine on the first layer I'm gonna go through because this is that cadmium red color I'm gonna add another layer um, I want these to be a little pinker I'm gonna add another layer and it that op the opaqueness of it or the opacity which is a not as opaque or not as transparent as some watercolors is going to cover that up. All right, let's pick up some more of that brown. While these are still wet, go back over here. I'm gonna drop some little dots on the top. I'm gonna connect these guys. I think I had another question in the comments. Hold on one second while I do these little guys. Uh, any suggestions on an affordable 100% cotton watercolor paper? Uh, yes, I do have some suggestions. I mean, cotton is always going to be more expensive. You're never going to find a cotton paper that is comparable price-wise to some of the, um, the cellulose papers or the wood pulp papers. Okay, so you just have to be resigned to that. Um, what I would say is some of the papers that I really enjoy that are cheaper than Arsh or Arches. Um, some of the, they're cheap. So Arsh, Arches as it's known in the US, um, is kind of the premium. That's generally the most expensive paper. That is actually what I'm painting on right now. So this is 100% cotton Arsh watercolor paper. However, this is 90 pound cold press. Now you're never gonna see me paint on 90 pound paper unless I'm doing cards. This actually adheres. It's, it, we're very low water use. It's half the price of what you would normally paint on the 140 pound cold press. So I got a sheet that I was able to make 32 cards out of for $7. Um, but it adheres to the card so much better. It is like buttery soft. It's a beautiful paper, this 90 pound. If I was doing a water heavy project, it would probably curl up pretty good on me. Um, but hello, steady space but um, it's great for card making. So that's Arsh. The other papers, so Fabriano Artistico is 100% cotton, but they also have some 25% cotton pieces as well, uh, papers as well that are okay. Um, but Fabriano uh, would be kind of the next level down in terms of cost for Arsh, a little bit cheaper. Um, I also love B paper. It's really hard to find their watercolor paper now, but they are pretty good, especially for practice. They come in six by nine sheets, a uh, 50 pack, and it's like really affordable. I also like, um, which I've discovered recently, is the Bohong Academy paper. Absolutely love that paper. Um, so those would be kind of my recommendations to look at those find them online. I have some of them linked in a lot of my videos in my supplies. So if you go to my supplies page, it's a bunch of Amazon links, but it shows you all of the different recommendations I have for different levels of supplies. So Fabriano is definitely in there. Um, Arsh. And then I think I, I did put Canson XL for beginners. Definitely not a hundred percent cotton paper, but it's a good entry paper. Hi, Pauline. Welcome. Welcome from the UK. Nice to see you. Oh, just got back from the UK. Well, not just got back. This summer I was there. Um, went to London, Manchester, Lake District. Loved it. I'm not sure where North Yorkshire is uh, geographically to wherever I was. Um, so, yes, those are my recommendations for paper. Um, but absolutely, if you can get your hands on 100% cotton, and if you're doing cards, go ahead and try Arsh 90 pound cold press. Um, I think you'll be like really pleasantly surprised. Okay, 
So we've put in berries, we've put in holly, we've put in some of these leaves. I'm gonna put in a few more leaves and then we're gonna finish up with pine. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna come back to my green, but this lighter green up top here. I am going to put in a couple right down here in the bottom. It's feeling a little blank. I will add in the stem in just a minute and then I'm gonna do a few just poking out from over here. Now I didn't add my stem in, I'm just using my imagination of where the stem would be as I paint these. Feel free to kind of paint in or lightly sketch in your stems first. I just like to go rogue sometimes. Okay, so let's put in, oh, thank you. Oh, steady space, welcome. You like my leaves, I appreciate it. Which leaves do you like, the holly or these little kind of broad, broad leaves? I like them both, but. They both serve different purposes. Let's put in a little stem here. And then my brown got a little carried away. There we go. All right, this is feeling nice and full. I'm gonna add in some pine. I could definitely leave it just as is. I don't know how y'all feel about that, but you can stop at any time when you feel things are full. Um, all right, so picking up more phthalo blue, picking up more sap green to really make a well-concentrated dark color. And then we're going to put in some pine. Um, sometimes I put in, well, I guess I'll do that. We'll put in a brown kind of stem. I'm going to put in a stem right here for pine with a little twig off of it. And... I'm gonna put one kind of coming this way over this part. So it'll be two there and then it's not gonna really be seen right there. All right, I'm gonna put it like right here, a kind of a long one. All right, so pine, there's a million ways to do pine. I'm gonna do kind of a short, a short needle pine, but just I did a stem down the center and I'm just gonna take the tip of my brush. All my strokes are going um, in a very upward trajectory. They're a little thicker towards the base of the pine or towards the stem and they kind of go out with a wisping motion. So a flick, 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 flick. Let's see if I can bring that even closer. Sorry, I can't really zoom in when I'm live. So I will zoom closer to you. This is the manual zoom in. Hopefully it's in focus. Those broad leaves. Oh yeah, the broad leaves are, those are fun. It took me a long time to really be comfortable with my leaves. I hated my leaves when I first started. I had to practice them so much. And that for my beginners out there, practicing and just painting like a whole page of leaves over and over again is one of the best ways to get better um, with your morning coffee, while you're watching TV, while you know you need something kind of mindless to do. Uh, it's, learn it's training your body in muscle memory. Just like you would for like any sport that you played or an instrument, you know, people aren't born with perfect like <laughs> Even though they might be born artistic or with the inclination to love art and love to do art, that doesn't mean you don't have to practice, 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 practice. So don't be discouraged if like the first time you pick something up, you're not like super proficient at it. You're not supposed to be. All right, I'm gonna throw one more short one in right here just to kind of even things out a bit. And then I think we are going to be done with this piece. So then we'll just talk a little bit about the other pieces. If there are any questions, please let me know. This is another simple holiday card idea. So all very simple shapes. And you can see we will adhere this. 
Let me see if I can get one without making too much noise on my mic. Uh, right to a card, a craft card. So these are half fold craft cards. They fold right in half. And then our card will be adhered here. And then we'll put them right in um, the envelope that comes with it as well. So this creates a nice little border around it and it has this really nice, comfortable feel. Um, so let's talk about, this was another one with our cascading shapes from the top. Here we have just berries and pine all the way around in a spray coming out from the center with the Marion Bright. The other thing you could do with this is just move the berries out and the pine out a little bit so you have almost a halo around the words and everything just comes out from the center but not covering the words at all. Um, here's another one, wishing you the happiest of holidays. And I've really concentrated all of my pieces kind of along the two sides on a diagonal. Uh, here is another one with that same, like the same process that we did for the top, the top one, but I just did it on the bottom and moved the sentiment to the top. Um, and then I will show you just a few other samples I have here using the same, same shapes but different, let me see if I have another one, kind of different colors. So this one is another spray, but in much lighter colors. This one, again, different sentiment, but and longer pine. So very easy to change things up pretty simply. This one is a whole different color scheme and I do have different elements in here. So we have some um, eucalyptus as well as open leaves in there. And last but not least, I'll show you a really different one that, um, again, using the same shapes, but a totally different color palette. So this is all uh, blue. This is all um, indigo blue, but just watered way, way down. So it makes this beautiful slate gray color with some or uh, gold accents. But it is, it's just those broad leaves and tiny little pine, that's all it is. And then little dots for berries that I actually embossed. So there's a lot of different ways you can take really simple shapes and turn them into all kinds of different uh, looks and feels for your cards. In my studio crew, if you're a studio crew member, we go over lots of different shape um, creation um, individually one by one and then learn how to put them together in different compositions using different color palettes to create over a hundred different um, holiday cards so that's something you can check out too again will be in the description of this video when it's done and also many videos um, that I've already done all right, so any last questions from the chat? Otherwise, I wanna thank you all for joining me today for this live. It's always a pleasure painting with all of you. I really appreciate your support um, and your commentary during our live sessions. I'll keep doing more of these as well as pre-recorded videos. Thank you all again. Have a wonderful day. If you celebrate and you are in the US, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Rhonda. If you're not and you watch soccer, have a happy World Cup week. Um, we'll be watching football, soccer all week long. Thank you, everybody. Take care and happy painting.